We're, we're, talking about, we're talking about Joseph in this, this uh, quarter CEU, and, and um, Joseph had this incredible life um, that, that we've all read about and all heard about uh, many, many times. And, and, and when you go through Joseph's life, in, in some ways it seems very, very sad that he had to go through so much. And in so many ways it seemed like unfairly had to go through uh, so much, but I hope that we learn in in this um, in in these lessons that every one of these tests that Joseph Joseph had to go through in his life really was just setting him up for something that God had for him later down the road. Um, I sort of can can maybe illustrate it like this over spring break um, me and Mia had the incredible opportunity to go surfing and uh, it was amazing right and so how many have ever been surfing it's incredible right and so this is only the, this is only the second time I've been surfing you know and so um, Still, still trying to learn how this this works, but it it was so much fun, and Mia did great, and so I'm out there trying to surf, but at the same time, I'm just really watching her, right? Because it's just so amazing watching her stand up on a surfboard and go all the way into the shore. But surfing really, really, um, it it looks fun, it looks amazing, but it, it's really sort of a lot of work. Like you get out there on this on this surfboard and, and you think, you know, hey, I'm just gonna go right out here to the, you know, the first little wave I see and, and just catch this thing, you know? And, and, and the surf instructor's like, no, we're going way out there. See, way out there where those, where the, where the waves are breaking, we're going out there. And so literally for 10 or 15 minutes, you're just on a surfboard, just, just paddling out there and I mean, it is a lot of work, you know. I mean, it, not not everyone is in the shape of Mr. Boccaccio here, where that comes easy, you know. I mean, and so, so we're we're just like, wow, and you've got these waves just beating against you, uh, and so you you think you're making progress, and you're you're paddling out, and then you get this big wave that's coming at you, and you know what's about to happen, right? You know it, it's like it's either gonna take you 30 yards back from all that pedaling you just done or it's just gonna like topple you and the surfboard's gonna go rolling over and you're gonna go under the water and it's just miserable, right? And so you're paddling and paddling and paddling and, and uh, fighting against the waves and then you finally get out there and you set up on the surfboard and you just wait for that next big wave to come in and then then you turn the surfboard around and you start pedaling the other direction and then that wave catches the surfboard and you stand up on it and it takes you all the way into the shore, or at least you hope it, it does, right? So this thought sort of came to my mind as we were, uh, as we had that, that uh, moment there in, in Bali that Life is sort of like that for us, and, and certainly we can read in the story of Joseph that it was, it was like that for him. So many times in life it feels like that we are just fighting against the waves and the currents of life, and sometimes it feels like we just can't even catch a break, and it's work, it's hard, it's painful, and we're just paddling and paddling and paddling and we think we're making a little headway then a wave comes in and crashes over us and knocks us back and it's just so much so much work and sometimes we wonder is it even worth it but then we we get to those moments where we step into God's destiny like Joseph did we read about that last week and we realize that these same waves that are beating so hard against us at some point will become God's avenue to push us into our greatest destiny. Those same waves that are fighting you as you're going out there on the surfboard are really the same waves that are going to give you the ride of your life as you come into shore, right? So I want to encourage you through this series to hopefully um, not always be downcast when you see the waves of this life coming against you but to try to go into it with an understanding 
that God could have a bigger plan in mind. And so embrace, embrace those waves that you're fighting so hard against. Uh, because I believe like Joseph, you might find that at some point the surfboard's going to turn around and they're going to lead you in to a greater destiny that God has for your life. Um, last time we were together, we started at the end of the story when Joseph's brother stood, stood before him and he confronted him. And he was 39 years old, so he was, he was 17 when God gave him the original dream, which we're going to talk about today. So 22 years later, we read sort of the end of the story where Joseph stepped into his destiny and, uh, and confronted his brothers and, and, and loved his brothers. And remember what he told them? God sent me ahead of you. God sent me here. God did this. Um, and so that was amazing as Joseph realized that God had purpose in all these trials that he had gone through. So in that moment, Joseph was able to pass that purpose test in, in, in his life. Today, we're going to go back to the, to the beginning of the story in Genesis 37. Uh, and we're going to talk about another test that Joseph had to face. Jacob lived in the land, verse 1, Jacob lived in the land where his father had stayed, the land of Canaan. And this is the account of J Jacob's family line. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending flocks with his brothers, the son of Bilal and the son of Zilpal. Now one of those was Leah's maid and one of those was, was Rachel's maid. So uh, he was hanging out with his half-brothers, his father's wives, and he brought their father a bad report about them. So, so before, we, before we ever get into the dreams here, we're already seeing that Joseph was a tattletale, right? I know none of you in your classes have those kind of people, right? Uh, but, but Joseph was a 17-year-old tattletale. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age, and he made him an ornate robe uh, for him. When his brothers saw that their, uh, that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word of him. Remember, that, remember this, Joseph's brothers hated him, right? Joseph's brothers hated him. Uh, now, now I want to I show you how a 17-year-old acts, all right? His brothers hate him. Now, Joseph had a dream. And when he told his brothers, they hated him, or, or they hated him all the more. And he said, listen to this dream. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. Just brilliant to tell your older brothers who hate you this, right? Um, and his brother said to them, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule over us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he said. <coughs> then he had another dream. Now by this time you have to believe that, that he's, he's learned his lesson, right? Um, Listen, he said, I had another dream. And this time the sun and the moon and, and the 11 stars were bowing down to me. All right, so not only are you going to bow down to me, the whole universe is basically going to bow down to me. Now, when he, told his, when, he, when he told his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matters in mind. Now, I, I want to I talk to you for a few moments today about this pride test that, that Joseph had to take uh, because this was truly the first test. And, and if you want to be honest, he failed it, right? Um, but the great thing about God when we, when we take tests, uh, he, don't, he don't put a big F at the top of the page. He just merely puts a retake up there. And thank God he's gracious enough for us that he lets us retake these tests. Uh, in, in life. But, but, but I just want to give you three thoughts on this idea of the pride test. Num number one, I want to remind you of something we talked about last week, and that is this. God has a dream for you. It's so important that we, we get this, and we'll, we'll come back to this probably week after week after week, um, because it's something so important that we need to understand. 
Uh, what we need to understand about Joseph is, is the, the dream that he had that he was very prideful about. God actually gave him that dream, right? Um, now, God, God didn't want him to act with pride with that dream, but God gave him uh, that, that dream. And God has a dream for your life. Sometimes that is so hard for people to understand. Last week we talked about God has purpose for your life, and, and I don't know why, but some, some people and even some of you perhaps find it so hard to get your mind around that the, that the king of this universe has a dream and a purpose for you. Not the person sitting next to you, not the, not, the, not the person who looks like they're just amazing and has everything together. God has a dream for your life. Numbers 12, uh, 6 through 8 says this, Listen to my words. When there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, reveal myself to them in visions. I speak to them in dreams. But this is not true of my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. With him I speak face to face, clearly, not in riddles, for he sees the form of the Lord. Now, I, I believe if you struggle with having a, a dream or, or believing that God has a dream for your life, God has a purpose uh, for, for your life, uh, that there's a, there's a clear way for you to come in and to step into this understanding. Uh, you want to know God's dream for your life, you, you got to get to know God. You got to get in God's presence. Uh, Israel, we found in Numbers, Israel knew the actions of God. But Moses knew God. You say, is it really possible for us to know God that way? I, I think even more so than in the time of the Old Testament. Jesus said, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I've called you friends for everything that I learned from my Father, I've made known to you. I think, I, I think it's easier for us than it was in the time of Moses to step into the presence of God through Christ and to know God's dreams for our life. Um, one of the problems with this is that we, God has a dream for our life, but we can also have selfish dreams for our lives that sometimes get in the way of, of God's dreams. And so that is something that we always, we always have to battle against. Um, so the only way for you to get His dream is to get with God. Secondly, when, when you get an understanding of what God's purpose and God's dream is for your life. Um, very simply, don't brag about it. All right? So that's number two in your notes. Don't, don't brag about it. If we learn anything from Joseph, this would, this would be it right here. Um, the dream leads you to God's destiny, and if you brag about the dream, you might not get there, right? Um, ha have you ever known a person who constantly brags? Anyone? You ever, you ever known a person that constantly brags and you're sitting next to him right now? No? No? Um, patriots constantly... No. <laughs> it's different. He has something to brag about, right? Uh, um, why, do we, why do we brag? Why do, why do we brag? It's very, it's very simple. We brag because there's pride in our heart. We brag because there's pride in our heart. Matthew 12, 34 says, You brood of vipers, how can you who are evil say anything good? For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. The mouth speaks what the heart is full of. We brag because pride is in our heart. Uh, you can tell what is in a person's heart by what a person says. Uh, Joseph had no, no concept of his destiny when he told his brothers about the dreams that he had. He, he, thought, he thought that his destiny was to be famous and for the universe to know him and for his brothers to bow down for him. That wasn't his destiny. That was the dream that God gave him uh, that showed him a glimpse of what, what one day would happen. But it's, the, 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 dream, the dream that he got was his brothers would bow down to him. The, the destiny was that he was going to save his family and an entire nation through a redemptive act during this time of famine, right? Um, but pride always 
pride always has a voice. And pride always wants to be heard. And pride always wants to give an opinion. And pride, uh, pride also always interrupts other people, like Joseph interrupting his time with his brothers where they were, he goes in to tell them about him. Um, we have to deal with this if we want God to use us. Because just as we said about Joseph, the dream is not always the destiny. The dream was about his brothers bowing down to him, but the destiny was literally to save his family. And Joseph, in his pride, thought it was all about him being great. The dreams that God gives us are never about us being great. It's about us making a difference for God. But pride will convince us it's so that we can be somebody, so that we can be somebody great. Um, many people have dreams of becoming big deals, if you will. Uh, but God's destiny is always about making a big difference. Um, if you can't be humble with the dream, it's almost assured you won't be humble uh, in, the, in the destiny. Point number three, uh, insecurity, insecurity is the root of pride. Insecurity is the root of pride. Joseph always saw his brothers out there, um, always saw his brothers out there together, and, and he was sort of on the outside looking in and here uh, because I think he sort of felt as an outsider with those brothers. He was looking for a way in. And so he let his pride have a voice and go up and try to get in the middle of them and force his way in to that circle. Um, but in doing so, uh, that prideful moment was rooted in the insecurities that he had about the way his brothers looked at him. How many of you have ever dealt with pride? More than once, right? Um, here's the reality. With every new challenge in our life come new insecurities, right? And I, I've, I've, I've had to face this um, coming to, coming to Bice. Right, and this is this has been one of those areas that I think God has had to deal most with me with in my in our time here, because uh, I come from the world of the local church, right? Where for over 20 years I served in ministry in the local church, and I always felt very secure in in my in my roles in the in the local church. Um, felt secure in my, my ability to, to lead those ministries, to speak to people, to be with people at the hospitals. Just to, I, I, There was a security that was there. Uh, when when it came to Bice, not so much, right? Because I'm going from the world of the local church to the world of, of education, which was really unfamiliar to me. And I, I think, honestly, it's a good kind of unfamiliar, a good kind of uncomfortable. But with that, uh, I, I've, I've realized that it has provoked in me these insecurities. I'm not proud of them, but, but it, I, I'm reminded so many times when I get, around, when I get re around some of you, you are so awesome in what you do with these students and, and your, uh, your giftings in this world of education are so amazing that sometimes I look at myself and I'm like, hmm, I'm not sure I quite measure up there, right? And so... A couple weeks ago during Week Without Walls, someone, someone paid me a compliment. And I, um, I would love to say, man, I graciously received that compliment. And I, I think in the moment I did, and I did what you should do, and I passed, deferred the glory of that compliment on to others, right? But when I got home, I remember what I did. I told Tyra that compliment. I said... <laughs> You're not going to believe what so and so said about me. <laughs> and immediately I got that check in my spirit that said, you know what? That's insecurity. That's insecurity. You're not telling her because it's pertinent to anything that is that is going on in life. You're telling her because you want to feel good about yourself. You want to overcome some of these insecurities, and the way you do that is by trying to build yourself up. And God brought me back to this passage of Scripture that uh, I just I want to I want to close with 
in uh, Matthew. It's, it's actually found in several of the Gospels, but in Matthew 4, 6. Satan, Satan came to Jesus tempting him. said, if you are the Son of God, right? And he gives him this list of things to do. Hey, command this, this uh, stone to become bread. If you are the Son of God. You know what Jesus didn't do there? He never defended his case of being the Son of God. He, he, never, he never tried to prove himself as being the Son of God. He could have said, if I'm the Son of God. Do you not see those miracles I did? Do you not, do you not know, like, do you not know how great I am? Do you not, do you, do you not get this? If I'm the Son of God, if I'm the Son of God, let me prove to you I'm the Son of God. I could call down angels right now and take you out if I'm the Son of God. But he never tried to prove his case. You know why? Because he knew he was the Son of God. He knew he was the Son of God. And when you know who you are in Christ... When you know who you are in Christ, you don't have to run around telling everybody. When you know who you are in Christ, you don't have to go around and brag about it. You can walk in a security that only comes from knowing that I am His. He is mine. It doesn't matter what others might think because I know who I am in Christ. I know where my value comes from. You see, our dreams, sometimes we might get them confused and think that they're made to bring us fame. They're made to promote us. They're made to elevate us. They're made to make us look great, but they're really not. And when we begin to see our dreams in light of God's goodness, we begin to see a destiny that has far more potential than anything we could just ever do. Our dream, isn't, our dream might have been to be a science teacher or a math teacher or a history teacher, but you know what? God's destiny wasn't that for you. It was to make a difference in these students' lives. So today, let's realize who we are in Christ and let's go make that difference. Amen? God, we love you and we thank you for it. Help us, Lord, to walk in the security of who we are in you this day. Uh, we love you and we thank you in your name. Amen. Bless you guys.